Hi everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. We're at the HIMSS 2022 conference and we're here with Kevin Bridges. He's VP of Marketing and Business Development at Innovate Medical and Doug Gallagher. He's VP of Sales at Innovate Medical. Welcome guys. Thanks, good to be here. Great to be here. Yeah, so I'm excited to learn more. I mean, Innovate Medical has done a lot of really interesting things and you've been in the workstation on Will's business for 22 years. Like. That's kind of astonishing, to be honest. <laughs> it's a long time, right? So how have things changed over that time? Yeah, they, they've changed in, a, in, in many ways. I've actually been with the company for 19 years, wow. so I've got to experience a lot of that. I think uh, two key ways, though. One of them is um, the extent to which the products are actually used, the products that we build in support of mobile EHR documentation. In the beginning of the business, you might see them getting used 25, 30% of a shift just for very specific parts of the day. And that's really evolved. And now you might find environments, departments, areas of the hospital where they're used 75% of the time, maybe even continuously. Uh -huh. And so when you think about a 24 by seven by 365 environment, continuous use, <laughs> the products have really uh, had to be designed with that in mind, that level of durability, that sure. level of dependability. So that's one of the big changes. The other one is in the early stages, it was really just about the product, buying a device, buying an electromechanical structure. Okay. And because of uh, the proliferation of the EHR and how the importance of the products has increased, uh, customers view it much more as a, as a solution sale right now. So it's not just the product. They need tools, software to manage and monitor and control the fleet of devices. They need service programs that are going to make sure that they're up and running and performing optimally for the end users. So uh, it's just viewed differently by the customer uh, in that regard. Well, it's amazing the impact that it has on people. And I would say a theme of the HIMSS conference that I'm hearing from attendees is that they're kind of burnt out. <laughs> they have a lot of their organizations burnt out and they're trying to find ways that they can optimize their operational you know, or organization and, and be more efficient in the healthcare space. So, you know, it's never been more important, I think, than it is now. So, you know, Kevin, why don't you chime in, you know, what is Innovate Medical doing to impact that, you know, creating operational efficiencies for an organization? Sure. So, as Doug said, back 10, 15 years ago, it was about attesting to meaningful use and we were buying yeah, devices to get it to the bedside. <laughs> Now we've realized that we have this large fleet of roaming mobile workstations and how do we manage those? And how do we manage those efficiently? Um, so what we've really focused on um, is the power and the battery technology, okay. reducing the interruptions to recharge or keep it charged or know which batteries are good or which batteries are bad for the clinical user and leveraging a, the wireless infrastructure that's in place for a connected workstation model. We actually developed an asset management platform we call nice. Rhythm in the cloud. And with once those workstations are connected, uh, we can integrate with things such as their existing IT service management system. So rather than nursing having to stop to report there's an issue, whether it be on the workstation on wheels, aka cart, uh, or if it's the monitor, PC, barcode scanner, um, then they can use um, they can use that system two taps of an icon on a touch display and that will integrate directly into their service management system. So now you have real-time reporting from nursing. Uh, we can integrate with their single sign-on. Nice. One of the issues is delivering meds to the bedside and keeping the, the access to those meds secure. Uh -huh. uh, typically those codes were shared because they were too hard to manage. <laughs> but if we can integrate that with their single sign-on, then it becomes a seamless integration. Nursing doesn't have to do anything but sign on to their PC. And then uh, thirdly, uh, oftentimes managing those uh, users, nurses come and go, clinical users, whether it be physicians, nurses, or the ancillary staff. And if we can integrate that with their exi existing um, uh, active directory system, then we have control over those end users as well. So it's about automating, not only for the nurses, but also for the IT support teams that have to um, uh, manage those devices for those nurses. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about that a little. I mean, you know, what's interesting, the nurses are burnt out, the IT staff are burnt out, we're all doing too much and don't have enough time. And then probably if burnout is number one, theme number one, workforce shortage is theme number two. So talk about that and how you can help and how the right setup could help with burnout and fatigue, but also this workforce shortage and, and you know, trying to adapt and be more flexible that way. So, so 
first of all, we've really worked on the mental and in the physical and the mental fatigue that nurses deal with every day. The battery uh-huh. technologies are a big piece of that, okay. um, making it more lightweight. Uh, the other thing that we've seen is um, it, it falls under the um, jobs to be done theory. If we can put more on that mobile platform, when you think about what we do, it's mobile computing. Uh-huh. Uh, but it happens to be on a set of wheels rather than handheld. Uh-huh. So if we can get things integrated into that single platform, we can make those nurses much more efficient. Um, uh, barcode scanning, um, and you've got your PC and your monitor, but also we see uh, specimen collection printers, uh, e-signature pads, okay. um, and, uh, ER registration uses some type of document scanner. Mm-hmm. So bringing those devices into one platform so that it's there and available when they need it. And then going back to the um, IT side, just giving them the tools so they can remotely manage and monitor. Even know which, how many, not only how many devices they have, but which ones are being used, how often, in which department. Or on the flip side of that, do I have assets out there that aren't being used, Mm -hmm. um, and what do I need to do to get them back in service or relocated so the nursing staff has them when they need them, where they need them, and make sure they're fully operational. Yeah, there's no burnout that's worse than you can't find a workstation to work at, right? That's right. <laughs> and, and no one wants to pay for a workstation that's not being used. So I think that's interesting, uh, you know, from multiple perspectives. I think that also, Doug, you know, we've heard a lot about like handheld devices, right? I mean, you talk about mobile computing. Like a lot of people may ask the question, like, shouldn't everything have just moved to these handheld devices by now? And why hasn't it? I mean, you've been here for a long time, and I'm sure when the first iPhone came out, you probably heard this. So, why haven't we moved there? Why isn't it going there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the first thing I would say to that is that the handheld device, whether it's a smartphone or a tablet, absolutely has a place in the hospital. Mm-hmm in the EHR documentation workflow. But the reality is it's not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a hospital from one department to the next, from one unit to the next, uh, you have nurses, you have doctors, physical therapists, social workers, uh, ER registration uh, professionals, different areas with different workflows and different requirements. And so where the handheld might work in support of some of those requirements, and again, it's not a one size fits all, The workstation on wheels, as we call it, is geared towards people that are looking, as Kevin said, for support of more than just the computing device. Uh, So picture uh, somebody that needs access to e-signature capture devices, small uh, specimen label printers, spot check vital signs monitors. Our WOW, our workstation on wheels, becomes the aggregation point or the hub for all of that equipment, and you couldn't get that out of a handheld. Beyond the computer equipment, Uh, The end users of our type of a device look to it for the storage of supplies and medications and Uh things like that, the secure storage and transport of things beyond the computer. And so again, no way to get that out of a handheld Yeah, the iPad doesn't come attached to it. Yeah, exactly, (laughs) exactly. The other other big thing that um, I think some of the shortcomings that you see in those handhelds is um, theft. So how do you make sure those things don't walk out the front door? Uh, Droppage and breakage. Uh-huh. Right, people are always fumbling things. Uh, where do I charge it? Where do I put it when I'm working with a patient? And so uh, uh, they have some shortcomings that um, that don't exist in the in the realm of the mobile workstation. So there's a space for them, but uh, we're we're a, a long ways away, if ever, from having having them supplant the need for the uh, for the workstation on wheels. And you, can, and you can see the physician doing rounding. A handheld device probably works, but sure. think of a a nurse that's caring for a patient. So where do I put the device when I need to um, uh, care for the patient, start an IV, um, give meds? And the other thing is um, we see uh, the the large displays, 24-inch displays. Uh, A lot of information that we are collecting and using for decision making at the bedside as well as just the human interface, whether it be the full-size keyboard. If you're you're just checking a box that it works on a handheld, but if you're, if you're free-forming a patient record or putting notes in, a lot of times they want that full-size keyboard. Yeah, it feels like the other thing that's evolved, and you know, I say this as a tech guy myself, right, is, is really the service level that hospitals seek when it comes to their mobile EHR documentation equipment. Mm-hmm. Talk to us about that and how that's changed. I mean, I remember I implemented 100-something workstations at my organization, so, but I was like, I wanted to own it, but how are you seeing that kind of change and evolve? So, Doug talked about how 
almost mission critical, critical the EHR workstation has become. Uh, not that they're processing data all day, all shift, but they are, it's in their presence. Right. So one of the things we saw in the industry is it was just, um, it was acceptable to have a 24 hour response time to repair a device. Well, that's two nursing shifts. So we use that connected workstation model to create a service plan that we call the uptime uh, ready replacement program. What we do is we position loaners on site. Now, typically what happens with a loaner is it gets uh, consumed in the general population and nowhere to be found when it's needed. <laughs> so we, w with those location services, we've, we're actually monitoring those ready replacements. And when one gets deployed, our tech service team at our corporate office would know that they were being deployed. So it does a couple of things. Um, it, it allows a, an immediate uh, ready replacement as fast as the uh, IT team wants to respond and uh -huh. roll out that loaner to the nurse. Uh -huh. It also um, takes the IT team out of the break fix process. Yeah. They, they don't have to diagnose the problem or, um, or, or perform the repairs and our technician will come out and make the repairs. So we have various levels of, of service from uh, multi, uh, one day a week, three days a week, five days a week, uh, on-time technician but what we're, uh, full-time technician, but what we're seeing in the industry is um, IT teams are, are burdened with so many tasks that the vendor-managed inventory or the vendor-managed equipment is where we, can, where we can help. Yeah, it's a powerful change. And I mean, as we've discussed, burnout and, the, you know, and having an efficient workstation to just work so they can focus on their job has been so important. It's just gotta work, yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah, so Doug, where can people go to learn more about Innovate Medical? So there are a few ways. Uh, certainly our website has uh, a wealth of information on it, www.innovatemedical.com. Uh, we actually have a rep finder tool. The best way, or one of the best ways to learn more about us is with engaging with our field sales representatives and field sales team. We've also come up with a very unique way to educate people about our offerings and also for us to learn more about their applications and requirements and we call it Innovate Live. Okay. So Innovate Live is a studio. Uh -huh. uh, we've actually recreated a hospital room environment, wow. set it up with all of our products and then brought audio video capabilities into it and through uh, various platforms we have uh, live interactive sessions with our customers and as I said it's a great exchange of information uh, prior to making a product recommendation where we're just not throwing something at the wall to see if it'll stick. We learn a lot about what they're looking for and then we're able to really tailor a, uh, a response to that. We think of it as uh, diagnosing before we prescribe. <laughs> so Innovate Live, you can I actually like register for an Innovate Live session right on our website. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a great tool, certainly in the pandemic when uh, visitation sure. was restricted, but even moving forward apart from the pandemic, very, very productive sessions we've had uh, in the Innovate Live environment. Just Google Innovate Live. Yeah, perfect. And I think what's interesting, I've talked to a lot of your field representatives, and you do understand what's needed. It's not like, let me just throw a bunch more workstations at you. It's like, what do you really need? And that's what I found with Innovate Medical. That's really interesting. And you can share the best practices from all these other organizations. So thanks so much for sharing all these insights and perspectives. And thanks everyone for watching. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you.